Hallelujah, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And so are you. It is early, but you guys are here to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord, our risen and reigning Lord Jesus, who lives and reigns and is with us this morning as we gather together with saints and believers around the world at the triumph of our Lord Jesus over death and the grave. What a joy it is to be with you. Thank you for gathering with us this morning on this wonderful Easter Sunday. Just wanted to uh, warmly invite you as well after the service to stick around and enjoy the fellowship as we enjoy our Easter brunch. Thank you everyone who's contributed and all the helpers for our wonderful altar guild. We have our Joyful Noise Choir with us this morning. Thank you parents for getting them up and out of the house early in the morning. What a blessing. God be with you as we celebrate and worship our risen King. Please stand and face the rear of the sanctuary, the processional cross for our opening hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I invite you to take a moment of reflection before the Lord.
Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Those first witnesses of the resurrection came with fear and trepidation in their hearts, but the perfect love of the risen Lord casts out all fear. So he did for them, and so he does for you. His almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our worship continues as we speak responsively the intro. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. You will bring them in and plant them on your own mountain, the place, O Lord, which you have made for your abode. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God the Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Congregation may be seated. I invite the children to come forward. Good morning, gentlemen. Looking dapper. Oh, my goodness. Watch your nod. Oh, you too, Sam. Looking sharp, my guys. How are you today? Good. It's early. I know it's early, but you're, you're nice and wonderfully dressed, ready for the service and ready for the day. Easter day is a wonderful day, isn't it? The greatest news in the world that Jesus is risen from the dead. Not only do we get to celebrate that, but we also get to eat great food, which is a bonus, right? There's so many good foods on Easter. What are, what are some of your favorite foods on Easter? What are some of your favorite? Yeah, Ma. Candy. Candy, okay. <laughs> but, but be more specific. Like what candy specifically? Lollipops? Yes. The size of your face. Yes, okay. Uh, other candies? What, what, what are some of your other favorite candies? Yeah. Tootsie, really? Tootsie Rolls? Okay, I'll give all my Tootsie Rolls to you. Yeah. Well, others of you guys, what's your favorite food that we get to eat on Easter? Yeah, Elise? Cinnamon rolls. Oh, so good. And casseroles, all kinds of new things to do with eggs and cheese and sausage. Like, I'm here for all of it. Well, you know what? Today, God has a feast, too. And we're going to hear in the scripture in just a moment that there's something that God is gobbling up today more delicious than casseroles or Tootsie Rolls or lollipops or even those Cadbury gooey eggs. You know what God is eating up today? What's on his menu? Death. We're going to hear in the scripture that God has come to gobble up death itself so that you and I don't have to fear it any longer because Jesus swallowed it up when he rose from the grave. Can you pray with me? I invite the congregation to pray as well. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the good news that your son rose from the dead. Fill our hearts with your joy and peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, guys. Our Old Testament reading for today is from the book of Isaiah, the 25th chapter. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations, he will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away all tears, tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our epistle reading is from 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I deliver to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with script, the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it is, was I or they, so we preach, and so you believed. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand. Gospel according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe. And they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who is crucified? He has risen. He's not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated for our hymn of the day, number 465. Now all the vault of heaven resounds.
Hallelujah, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. You may be seated. The future is so cloudy where once it had been so clear. For these women making their way to the tomb in that early morning, one moment, everything had been so clear. In fact, their future was so bright they had to wear shades because the Messiah had come, the one that they had long waited for. He had arrived, and with him, the kingdom of God in his train. And that kingdom was a blessed backward kingdom which pronounced God's blessing on the poor in spirit, which said to those who were hungering and thirsting after righteousness that they were filled in him, that looked for the people on the margins, the outsiders, and said, now, now you have been gathered into the family of God. Their future was so bright. Everything was looking good and glorious and clear. And now, now in an instant, it looks like it's all been wiped away. Their Messiah, their teacher, their friend has been murdered, swept away from them. And now just like that, it is more chilling than a snowstorm after the first taste of spring. Any of you know what that's like? <laughs> Even more chilling than that. And what's the future going to hold for them now? There's the immediate practical problem which dawns on them as they're making their way to the tomb. They're like, oh yeah, how are we going to move the, the boulder? Who's going to move the stone for us? There's that problem. But there's the much bigger problems in the future for them as well. Because they're wondering, oh, wait a second. Maybe those same religious leaders, persecutors, the ones who, who came after their Lord Jesus, Maybe now they're going to be coming for them, too. What does the future hold? How are they going to face the future without their teacher and Lord? What, what's going to become of their apostolic band, of all the group of disciples that have been traveling along with the Lord Jesus? Are they all just going to be scattered hither and yon? How are they going to face the prospect of death without him? And let's just add this. What's God going to say to them? Because they had believed that this Jesus was the Messiah. Had they cast their lot with the wrong one, now they must face the fearful prospect of judgment from Almighty God, idolatry, having worshipped and revered the one that they thought was his son. What does the future hold? One moment everything had been so bright and clear, but now... Now it is nothing but cloudy, murky, uncertain. And it can't help but leave them feeling anxious and afraid. Maybe you can relate. Maybe you can relate as you look out on the future of our world and all of its uncertainty and fearfulness. Where to begin, right? The people who know these sorts of things say that this pandemic that we went through, that it was nothing, that we're going to have another one, and that in a certain sense, we got lucky from one perspective. That could have been much, much worse. Or you look at our geopolitical state. You wonder what's going to happen next. Are we looking at a world war in the not too distant future? Nuclear holocaust? Or maybe you could think about the surveillance state and our AI robots that are coming for your lunch very soon. <laughs> when you look out on our world, what does the future hold? Or we could get much more personal, couldn't we? Maybe you can relate to these women because of, of things that you have endured or are enduring in your own life. When you get to a, a certain point in life and you think, okay, I know what my dreams are. I know what my future is. And then something happened and those dreams are dashed. You were looking forward to a, a re retirement, a quiet retirement, you and your spouse. But then one of you falls ill or one of you falls. You thought you had your future all laid out before you, but then 
boss had a change of plans or restructuring. Things aren't going to look like he thought. Maybe there's another recession in store and your finances, all of the, that nest egg that you had laid up, now it's been cracked and broken and lost. In countless ways, you and I face an uncertain future. I think of what a, a new friend of ours, Canute, when we met in Africa, we were talking about the future specifically for Africa, but it applies for any of us. And I asked him, do you see any light at the end of the tunnel? And he said, yeah, I think we do, but I'm afraid it might be an oncoming train. When we think about the future for you and me, it's like we're looking out on this great field of landmines. Everywhere you turn, there's another one, whether it be your health or the state of the country or your kids or any number of things, politics and personal matters, vocation and calling. There's landmines everywhere you look as you look out on going into that fearful future, and oh, by the way, it is foggy beyond all seeing. Who wants to go first? Jesus does. Jesus does. The clouds start to break when the women are making their way to the tomb and they noticed that that great big boulder they were worried about has been cast aside like some little pebble. Who did that? The clouds are starting to break. They break even more and the bright radiant rays of the morning start to shine when they come into that tomb and they see, whoa, there is a young man dressed in white. The other gospels tell us that it is an angel that's there. No surprises there. And that angel has a message for them. He's almost too excited. He's like a pastor on Easter morning, right? He's been waiting for this. This is his big moment. They come in. And, oh, my goodness. What is this? He said, whoa, don't be alarmed. Um, you're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified, right? No, we're looking for the Easter bunny. Yes, we're looking for Jesus of Nazareth. Of course we are. He says, oh, you're looking for him? Well, guess what? He's risen. He's not here. Oh, sorry, guys. There's going to be Easter eggs in this sermon. When I say, he is risen, you say, he is risen indeed. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And wait, there's more. Just like he promised you, just like he promised you, this risen Lord Jesus, he goes before you. Turn to your neighbor and say, he goes before you. He goes before you because ours Ours is the go before God. Ours is the go before God. What do I mean by that? Think back in the scriptures. Think back to the Old Testament. Many of us have been reading the book of Exodus. Think about the Israelites wandering in the wilderness. How did they do that? It's because God did what? He went before them in a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night because he is the go before God. We see this again and again throughout the scriptures. I'll just share with you a few scriptures. Deuteronomy chapter 1, it says, The Lord your God who goes before you will himself fight for you, just as he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. Because he is the go before God who goes and fights your enemies for you. Put them up, put them up. That's who he is. Or again, Isaiah 45, I will go before you and level the exalted places. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron because he is the go before God. And whatever my obstacles might come before you, he is able to level them in an instant. Again, Psalm 85 says, righteousness will go before you and make your footsteps away. God clears the path. His righteousness, his peace and kindness go before you and make your footsteps away. Or think again of the Magi, who we think of as the wise men, but as we read the scriptures, it becomes clear they're not really so wise. But God, God shows kindness on them that even though they go to King Herod and say, hey, where is this rival king to be born? Like, guys, really? That's not the right guy to go to. But in any case, God shows kindness and he goes before them with that star. And they rejoice exceedingly to see that star that goes before them. Because finally, in the fullness of time, the go before God 
Well, he went ahead and took on flesh to dwell among us in the person of his son, Jesus. Our Lord Jesus is the incarnation of the go before God. And what do we see throughout our Lord's life and ministry? He is the one who goes before his disciples. He goes before them to face the devil, goes toe to toe with the evil one and prevails. He is the one who goes before them into all uncertainty and anxiety producing events. He is the one who goes before them and goes before the Father for them and for you and me, who pleads the case before God on high and says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He is the go before Lord, the one who leads you and me until finally, finally he goes before his disciples into death and the grave. He braves that minefield for us all. He is that great godly guinea pig, or perhaps more aptly put, he's the sacrificial lamb. He is the sacrificial lamb who without a word in his mouth goes silently to the slaughter for you and me and all the world. He braves that minefield and takes the hit for us. He is that sacrificial lamb. But you know what? The lamb who was slain has begun his reign because he is risen. He is, he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. He is risen indeed because he goes before you and me, not only through life, but in death. He goes into the grave and comes out the other side so that he can lead you and me every step of the way. So what does that mean for us today as we go through this life in the midst of all of our clouds of uncertainty? My mind goes to parents. I think about for parents, because for parents so often we wonder, what does the future hold? What is that uncertainty? We bear that burden, wondering what's life hold for me, for my kids, for my grandkids? What's all going to be ahead? I think of uh, my friend Amy. You've heard of helicopter parents, you know, who are always looking over their kids. Uh, our friend Amy, she says that she's a snowplow parent that she wants to go before her kids and clear the way for them, right? I read this wonderful post article by a, a teacher, a guy named Mark Backey in Texas. And he was reflecting on his own dad, who had died 20 years before. He was thinking about his dad, who was a faithful follower of Jesus and all the things that he had taught him. And Mark wrote this. He's, he had one particular memory. He said, I'm an eight-year-old kid, and dad is taking me fishing. There are tall weeds between where we parked the car and the pond where we're going to fish. Dad goes ahead of me and I try to follow, but soon he's lost from sight. And I'm surrounded by weeds that are twice as tall as I am. We've done this before and he's taught me not to panic, but just to follow the trail of bent and broken weeds. So that's what I do until I reach the pond and find him smiling back at me because he knows where I'll pop out of the weeds. He goes on and says, and so it's been 20 years now that I've been walking through the weeds of life without him, but I've got this trail to follow because he intentionally did things to help me see it. And I firmly believe he was following a trail that Jesus left for him. So one day I'll pop out of the weeds and Jesus will be waiting for me with dad right there with him. This is what our Lord Jesus has done for you and me. He is the go before God incarnate. He is the leading Lord. Hebrews 12 puts it this way in familiar words. Look to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. But that word author would be better translated pioneer, trailblazer, the one who went before you to the cross, disregarding this, the disgrace, and for the joy set before him, endured it for you and me. He is the go before God. He is the leading Lord. He is the snowplow savior, see? The one who has cleared that path for us all. He knows what awaits you and me, and he is unafraid because he holds it all in his hands. But listen, still in this life, there's a lot of cloudiness, isn't there? Shucks, here on Easter Day in northern Michigan, it's plenty cloudy, amen? But I often go back to that quote from C.S. Lewis. 
He said, I believe in the resurrection as I believe that the sun has risen. Not because I see it, but because by it I see everything else. Not because I see it, but because by it I see everything else. See, the promise for you and me is not that every day will be ever clear, that everything is always going to be bright and sunshiny every day of, the li of our lives. No, the promise for you and me is that the risen and reigning Lord Jesus, that the sun has risen and he goes before you. He goes before you. And it can't be said enough that we don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. It is that risen and reigning son. And so he turns to you and me, the Lord who leads you now and who will one day lay his hand on your grave and lead you out of death. He goes before you and me now and turns and says with a simple summons, Follow me. Amen. Amen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And we rise and profess our faith in the risen Lord through the words of the Apostles' Creed. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, since he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the prayers of the church this morning, in addition to those named in the back of your worship folder, we pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters in Kenya and for our sister church there, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Kenya. We pray also for our neighbors in Gilmore Township, and for all those who are celebrating birthdays this week, for Priscilla Newton, whose birthday is today, Elise Gochina, Margaret Punches, and Sandy Anderson, who's back with us. Good to see you, Sandy. Happy birthday to you all. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs, saying, Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Almighty God, you kept your promise and delivered up your own Son to be our Savior. By his sacrificial death, our sins are forgiven, and by his rising again, we have the hope of the resurrection. Keep us in this holy joy throughout the Easter season and all our daily lives, that we may not fear our enemies, nor give in to the temptation of despair in our days of trouble. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed Lord, we pray for your church throughout the world, including our brothers and sisters in Kenya, especially those who are persecuted there. Make her to be a light to the world, and a blessing to her neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, have mercy on the sick and those who are in any need. We make mention before you especially of Eunice, Kathy, Carl, Ted, and Carol. For Diane, Jacob, Mike, Doug, Evan, and Carl. For Pat, John, Walt, Candy, James, Jane, and Melba. For Dale, Sandy, George, Alicia, Stephen, Earl, Vic, Marty, and Mike. For Joyce, Jason, John, and Carol for Dorothy, Larry, Katie, Andy, Carla, Stan, Hugh, and those whom we name in our hearts now. Let the dawning light of the new creation in Christ sustain them in faith, and in accordance with your will, grant them renewed health, a foretaste of their eternal healing in the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. And gracious Savior, we praise you for those who celebrate the gift of life this week. Priscilla and Elise, Margaret and Sandy, keep their hopes ever fervent for the gift of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
And we praise your holy name, O Lord, for all your servants who have departed this life in faith. We pray that you will not abandon us to Sheol, but that when we awake in the resurrection of all flesh, your presence will give us joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We remain standing as the offering is brought forth and we sing the offertory. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death. And by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. We share his peace with one another.
You may be seated. We'll receive Holy Communion in the chancel this morning. Follow the lead of your ushers as we receive God's gifts. God be with you.
we stand to sing our post-communion canticle. <laughs> Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the holy supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming, we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. We remain standing for our sending hymn number 477, Alleluia, Hearts to Heaven. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah.